Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by, by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. For over 30 years, Vanguard Outdoors has made the gear that turns a regular hunt into another fine day of field. We know that a good shooting stick or a nice pair of binoculars can make or break your day. Our design teams include serious hunters who work hard to bring you the best sporting optics, shooting sticks, tripods, bags, and more. We are Vanguard Outdoors. Hi everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Silik, and we've got an all new show lined up for you this week. We'll visit with Lance Valentine from Teach and Fishing for one more walleye fishing tip to get you out there this spring with some good info. You won't want to miss that. And Jordan will take us on a trip with the DNR to see what it looks like when they use fire to manage our natural resources with a prescribed burn. You won't want to miss that. And Jimmy's got some other excitement in store for us this week. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have one more story on this week's show. We're going to kick things off out of the port of Manistee. I was able to get up there last week. I had a good friend of mine who's a charter boat captain give me a call and say that the fish were biting. And boy, was he right. We got into the fish and we had a great time up there. You won't want to miss that story. Lots of good variety on this week's episode. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger, and it's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors What a beautiful day in the woods Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy The wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees The sweet smell of nature's in the air Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at greenmarkequipment.com. By Angler Quest Pontoons. Angler Quest is a Michigan based company building boats designed for comfort and fishing functionality. For more information, anglerquestpontoons.com. By Polar Craft Boats, offering riveted and welded boats for the outdoor enthusiast. Whether you're targeting fish or waterfowl, Polar Craft Boats have several models to choose from that keep you high and dry. For more information, polarcraft.com. But we're gonna go out, we're gonna, basically we're gonna be fishing on the shelf, 100, 100 to 150 foot of water, and we're gonna be trying to get some king salmon. Fishing's been really good. Um, we've been getting anywhere from 10 to 15 fish per trip, and they're really nice too. Most of them are 12 to 20 pounds, so hopefully today we go out and, you know, get it done. I have fished with Lenny on the show several times over the years, and when he calls and says that he is on fish, well, I try to get there as soon as possible. Joining us today was Lenny and his buddy Jeff Bonin, then good friend of mine Missy Carey and her dad Ron Hendrickson, and her uncle Gary Brandt, all who live down the road in Ludington. We had high hopes, but none of us really expected a triple right out of the box. And the weatherman was wrong. It was supposed to be sunny out, and as you can see, we got like a haze. I don't know if this is the smoke from that big wildfire out in Canada or whatever, but so all my program was kind of geared towards the, the, the sunnier skies, so I'm kind of having to tweak it a little bit and go to darker day baits right now. So 
Okay, it's, and then what's the wind doing here? Well, we got a southeast wind and it's moved those fish out. Yesterday they were in 150 to 180, now they're out to 200 to 240. The east winds kind of pushed that water, that river water that I was talking about earlier, it's pushed it out a little bit deeper. And it's, so it is scattering the fish as it pushes that water out into the open deep water. So we're gonna have to just kind of stay on the fish, the pods that we have right now and hopefully pick away at them. So the weather moves out, moved the water around a little bit? Yeah, it did, yep. East winds, north winds are the two worst winds you know, up here in Manistee, Ludington area, because we have deep water. And once that warmer water gets pushed out, it kind of just disperses out in that colder, deeper water. So the fish can, you know, get trickier to catch when that happens. Hopefully we just keep, you know, picking at them here. Well, you're finding a few. Yep. Nice fish. Got him? Yep. Nice triple there, buddy yeah, boy. That was good. All right, we gotta have some people hold some fish here. Yeah. We had hit the water today at 5 a.m. because Lenny said the bite had been early. So early he hadn't been able to get all of his rods in the water typically. Well, today that was not the case. The shifting wind had moved the water a bit, thus moving the fish deeper. But Lenny quickly picked up on that, and we were on the fish after an hour or so of exploring. Once we did find the fish, we stayed on them pretty regular throughout the morning fishing 150 to 200 feet of water and keeping our baits in about 30 to 90 feet of water. <laughs> Just your size. Yeah. We uh, took out 100 feet of line. Ooh, baby. 150 feet. One of the cool things about the outdoor industry here in Michigan is just how many good folks are a part of it, like Jeff Bonin. This is a brand new fly in the uh, Popeye's uh, family. We have Popeye spinach, we have Brutus, and now this is olive oil that just fired today. Just put down, it's down about five minutes. So. Oh. Yeah, we're excited about that. Sweet peas coming. Yeah, <laughs> sweet peas coming, so. And what's your fly company called? Uh, Rapture Trolling Flies. How long have you been doing that? Uh, we've been tying about 25 years, and uh, uh -oh. it's, uh, the business is kind of crazy, but uh, it's fun. It's a lot of fun still, so. The fly and rotator has become a big deal on Lake Michigan over the past few decades or more, and at least today caught more fish than did the spoons. It was also nice to see Lenny on the phone today with several of the other charter boats today sharing depth, speed, color, or fly or spoon. Many of these guys work together when they get on fish. Now, not all of them do, but many do, and that is great to see because at the end of the day, many of these guys need each other to make this all work. And speaking of making this all work, it was nice to have an extra camera person on board so I could actually catch a fish today as well. Uh -oh. That one on. Get the film crew out and about. That's right. Of course, Jimmy, you get the small. I'm going one on the, the payroll, day. Jimmy. Yeah, you're up next. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, this is just a little small one. Oh yeah. That's the driller for the night. Yeah, it's just a little guy. Gotta start somewhere. That's right. Well, you're trying. This is just a nice little 15 incher. It's not that little. I mean, that's a nice, respectable yeah. two year old. Uh -huh. Perfect little go. eater king salmon. Look at that. Good job. Nice job, film crew. <laughs> yeah. In Manistee here, typically the middle of May is kind of like the spring kings when they first show up. And they're going to usually hang around for two to three weeks. So usually until that first week of June, you can count on them being here. Once the alewives, you know, are, are finished spawning, the, the alewai will drop back out of the, the river mouse and they'll go back out. And if the alewai stay here, our salmon will stay here. But a lot of times we'll get a lot of strong east winds in that first week of June and it kind of pushes everything offshore and away from us and we'll lose our fish and then it becomes trout fishing for until you know middle of J July when the, the big mature fish start coming back and staging so you know last year we never lost our kings they were here the whole season 
which was really nice. So, you know, this year it's just kind of a crapshoot. You don't know exactly what we're going to get until the weather dictates it. Now here's where things got a little crazy. We started with three fish on, so I grabbed a rod. Then a few more hit. Of course, my GoPro stopped recording, but let's just say we had a lot of fish on in a short period of time. How many fish did we have on there, Lenny? We had five on, we got four, and we had five. So <laughs> it was a pretty good um, hookup ratio. The other one was just a hit, hit, gone. So you guys did awesome. Jeez, even the camera guy had to catch one. Captain. Captain, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I grabbed it and it, it didn't get hooked up. Nice job, everybody. Yeah. Hey, Lenny, do you have a one on the tiger here, Dad? <laughs> oh, yeah, there's one over there, too. Must have been on the flies this, that you're this using. Poor, this poor fish has been on the hook saying, hey, I'm going to be. We ran out of fishermen. All right. So, like most of our day, as soon as I got Lenny to stop to talk about the day, or conditions, or in this case, about the effects of the warm winter, well, we just got more fish. Um, well, last year when I put, pulled the boat out in December, the first week of December, the water was still 48 degrees out here. It was really, really warm, and it was consistent from the top all the way down to 300 foot. Oh, there's one. Sorry. No, you're good. So, <laughs> so the water was very warm in December, and going into winter, we had a very mild winter. So the lake kind of cooled down a lot, a lot slower than what it normally does. We didn't have that cold spell, and with that happening, the the Ly population, you know, was more stable in areas that normally they don't stay. They usually go to that deep, deep water. Well, they were able to stay closer in, which has, you know, made our salmon fishing a little bit better this spring early, because they, oh, he's here already. Today was one of those days you kind of dream of. We had steady fish all morning long and really stopped fishing around 10 a.m. with 16 fish, 14 kings and two nice lakers, which is a lot of fish. We started with a triple and even had four or five on at one point. Lenny has become a good friend over the years, and when he says the bite is on, well, I have learned to trust him, and he was right. I am sure it will taper off, but then it will fire back up. Conditions constantly change on the big water. Winds change, which moves the fish, and good fishermen, well, they learn how that affects the fish, and then they find them again. So if you book a charter this spring or summer, you may not get a full cooler, but I can guarantee you a few things. You will have fun. You will get to spend some time with friends and family, and you will make memories. And if you're lucky enough to get a full cooler, well, that's just icing on the cake right here in Michigan's Out of Doors. For our next segment on this week's show, I was down in Barry County with the DNR to learn a little more about prescribed burns and why you're likely to see more controlled burns this time of year. Today we're in the Berry State game area and we're doing portion of a burn called the hills. Um, it's a very large topographical area with lots of oak overstory and that's what we're hoping to promote and um, we're trying to get rid of one of the big things is evasive species. Uh, one of them is the autumn olive that you see around here that's just starting to leaf out. That's one of our target species today. The burning process we actually use the wind to our advantage and we make the fire work against the wind. It's a longer consumption ride because what we're looking for is as much time against the stems of the autumn olive and honeysuckle and red maple to treat them and kill them back as far as we can. The longer residence time we have on the stems, the better the treatment is to remove them. There are a lot of areas around the state in need of prescribed burning. So I asked Paul how they decide when and where to burn and how they're able to control these massive fires. From the state of Michigan standpoint, we try and do as many as we can. There's usually more burn plans than what the season allows just because stuff starts greening up. We have higher fire danger, we have to be on standby that's when we don't burn. 
and it's, it goes like that. We do as many as we can every year. Um, we do anywhere from 10 to 15,000 acres a year across the state. And we try to, the biologists, they're the ones that tell us, okay, so many years we want to go back in and we have to write another plan for that same site. So it's every so many years we'll come back into a site and reburn. When we start lighting, we'll light in one corner. The farthest downwind side is when we start. And we just start working out different ignitions and we work the flanks of the burn to get a nice size control line all the way in around it before we start going interior. And usually we'll do strips interior of walking and then carrying fire with us and lighting the ground as we go. Um, today we use one of our other tools that we just got a couple years ago. We actually use a drone and we use that over the top and that allows us to keep our employees even safer and we're lighting from up above and it's a very controlled situation and we just float back and forth as the lines are done and then we um, tie back in. And we have a safe, secure line. We'll stay here until the fire's mopped up for quite a ways in and make sure there's nothing near the line. Well, we started using them uh, as far as this style of drone for fires uh, just a couple years ago. Its primary function is to drop the ignition spheres. Uh, it's a super safe way to do it. It has an ignition sphere and it injects it and it's a chemical reaction. And then once it hits the ground, it's another 30 to 45 seconds before it even ignites. So you get a lot of time to to work with it and then uh, beyond that it's a good lookout it's got a FLIR camera um, so we can see where the fire's at on the lines and if anybody's you know in danger of that as as we fly it and then also um, with that camera you can see where you've dropped uh, the spheres um, as you as you run it along so you can get an idea of like what it's doing one of the main reasons for these burns is to help control invasive species and the timing of these burns is very important when it comes to accomplishing that goal. So timing of prescribed burning, we usually do spring burns right as invasive species come out. They're usually the first species to start leafing out and when they start to leaf out they're taking all their nutrients from the, the roots and putting them into growth. The reason that we want to remove invasives, I mean the biggest is that they are non-native. So over time they will start to encroach and encroach and encroach and take over large areas and it doesn't, they don't allow, they create this really thick understory so they don't allow any of the native plants underneath to get sunlight that they need or the nutrients in the soil to take over that stand and replenish themselves. Although there are alternatives when it comes to removing invasive species, if possible, the state prefers to use prescribed burning. So the reason why Michigan really wants to use prescribed burn as an effective tool for land management is because um, burning, it's, it's a natural disturbance that is Michigan has involved with. So historically, Michigan uh, ecosystems relied on fire. These, these habitats are really adapted to the fire regime. And so, the reason we want we want to try to manage in the most natural way possible. Also, in the absence of fire, the way to manage these species is cutting and applying herbicide, which is also an effective method, but it we can get a lot more ground covered um, with burning. As we made our way out of the woods, I learned about something that may be of interest to any of you mushroom hunters out there. We actually have a big thing this time of year because we're turkey hunting. A big thing is morel mushrooms. And one of the things out there that everyone's talking about is after a burn or after a fire, the year after, there's usually always morel mushrooms in our site. And we actually have a site on our DNR website that shows last year where all the wildfires and prescribed burns took place on state land. If you just go to michigandnr.gov and Google fire, it will show up or even Google Morel Michigan map and it will come right up and show you right where all the burns were last year. Special thanks to Paul and the crew for showing me around and for teaching us all a little bit more about the benefits of prescribed burning. Over the last several weeks, we've stopped in with Lance Valentine from Teach and Fishing to get different walleye fishing tips from him and go over some of the gear that he uses to be more successful on the water. In this final tip with Lance, we're going to talk about different fishing lines, all the different types and what different applications you use them in. 
we're out here at Freeway Sports Center in Fenton, Michigan, talking about some things that are gonna help you catch more fish this spring. So stay tuned for some great tips to help you dial in on springtime fishing and maybe a little bit of details that you've never thought about to help you catch more fish. So let's talk about uh, fishing line. Now, obviously the only connection between you and the fish of a lifetime is your fishing line. And here I've got five different types of line that most walleye anglers should have, should be using. And we're gonna talk about where they work, where they don't work, and when you should be using them. So let's start with uh, probably the most popular, and that's gonna be a monofilament. Now, way, way back when, if you, if you uh, are my age, you remember your grandpa used to have Dacron line or cat gut line I had to keep wet. Uh, fishing lines come so far in the last 30 years. In the last five years specifically, we've actually been able to formulate lines to do very, very specific things. So this is one of my favorites. It's Sunline Supernatural Monofilament. It is a what we call a soft or a flexible monofilament. It's great for spinning reels. It's great for light line. It's great for using for leaders with live bait. Uh, heavier test, it's great for trolling because it has low stretch and low diameter for, for brake strength, but it's not very abrasion resistant. It's definitely not a line you want to throw around docks. You don't want to throw it around rocks. You don't want to use it as a trolling line if you're going to release your planer boards. Um, you don't want to do that because that friction is going to mess this up. But a line you should have on a lot of reels designed for casting crankbaits, smaller baits, small jigs. Anytime you want a line that's going to let your, your lure move and act natural, a soft, what we call castable monofilm is going to be something you're going to want to have. How do you know when it's time to change your line? Um, I would tell you this. However many days, if you're using monofilament, However many days a week you fish, you need to change your line that many times over the course of the year. So if you fish every weekend, Saturday and Sunday, two days a week, you probably need to go change your line twice a year. Um, monofilament wears down. The more it's in the water and the more it's in the sunlight, the more it wears down, the more it gets, uh, loses brake strength, loses knot strength most importantly, loses its shape and starts to stretch. So now it doesn't have that shock absorption that it used to have. So uh, at least one time a season, sometimes two times a season, if you use a monofilament, fluorocarbon, because it's not affected by UV and water, you can actually use it for two or three years without having to change it. If you like to jig fish, make sure you've got a braided line. Braided line has come a long way in the last 10 years. No stretch, very, very thin diameter, and usually high visibility, all things we want when we're jig fishing. So if you're vertical jigging in a river or you're casting jigs, a good quality braid is gonna help you catch more fish because you're going to feel more bites. Now, I like a thin diameter. This is a Sunline SX1, 12 pound diameter is about the same diameter as four pound fire line. So as we go to braided line, multiple strands braided together, we actually get more brake strength with less diameter. So look for a braid when you're looking for a fishing line to do this. Again, great for jigging. Heavier pound test, 30, 40, 50 pound test because it is low diameter. Great if you're a troller, you like to use dipsy divers or big jet divers. Great idea to put braid on your reels, be able to release that and fill those bites in deep water because there's no stretch in that fishing line. Let's move on to probably my favorite fishing line in the last couple of years. Um, and that is a fluorocarbon designed for trolling and casting. This is a Sunline Troll FC. Now fluorocarbon has been the big deal in the last five, six, seven years. A lot of things about fluorocarbon. Number one, the huge advantage of fluorocarbon is it doesn't deteriorate in the sun or when it gets wet. Monofilament, when it's out in the sun or it gets wet, it has a tendency to deteriorate. It'll start to rot. It'll start to lose its shape. It'll stretch. It loses strength. Well, we have a tendency to fish outside around the water. So monofilament does break down. We need to change it, very, change it a few times every year. Fluorocarbon does not do that. So I can put a line on my trolling reels and I can fish it for two, three, four seasons because even though I'm fishing every day, it's not gonna lose its shape, it's not gonna lose its strength, and it's not going to stretch. That's why fluorocarbon is a huge advantage. I like this for trolling on, as my main line on my uh, line counter reels that I use for trolling. I like it as a main line for casting big crankbaits. I fish a lot of big crankbaits, rattle baits, glide baits. I like fluorocarbon. Got a little bit of stretch, not as much as mono, but a little bit more than braid. So I've got a little bit of forgiveness there, but it's one of the lines that I absolutely love to use. And I use fluorocarbon more and more and more every year on different applications because it does work better than anything that's out there. Another fluorocarbon you want to think about is this is called super fluorocarbon. This is a very stiff abrasion resistant fluorocarbon designed for leaders. This is what I use for leaders. If I want a leader for jig fishing, it's why I tie all my crawler harnesses on. If I'm fishing around rocks or docks and I want to cast a crankbait or a jig, I'll put this leader on because it is abrasion resistant, a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier, but it does stop the line from abrading 
and it helps me catch more fish because I've got the invisibility of fluorocarbon, but I've got great abrasion resistance. You should have some fluorocarbon leader material in your boat. And lastly, if you're a walleye guy, lead core. If you don't have a couple lead core setups on your boat, if you're a troller, you're missing out. One color, two color, three color, four color lead core helps you get baits deeper. And the beauty of lead core, as opposed to putting a weight in front of your lure to get it down, lead core sinks very, very slowly. 30 feet of lead core is about one ounce. We call it one color. It changes colors every 30 feet. It's about one ounce. So what happens, instead of putting a big hunk of lead on your lure to get it down, you've got this long strand. So the lure kind of snakes through the water. Great for trolling spoons and for getting crankbaits a little bit deeper. If you're a walleye troller, you should have some lead core in your boat. Pay attention to the fishing line you're using. Make sure that you grab the fishing line that's best for the application you're using. I promise you, you'll catch more fish this year. Thank you so much for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stick around in upcoming weeks. We've got all sorts of great things happening as we move from springtime into those summertime activities. We'll have some more summertime fishing for you and all sorts of great things. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always check us out online. Well, that's right, Jenny. Online is a good way to kind of keep tabs on us. You can do that through our website, our different social media platforms, as well as YouTube. So lots of places you can be checking us out. Make sure you do get out and enjoy all that our great state has to offer. And hopefully you have a good, safe Memorial Day weekend with friends and family. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? you can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-ALTA. When I want to far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land I